Hello, this is Troy Eckert. I'm the CEO and manager of Eckerd Land and Acquisition. And I'm going to start providing you some intimate details about some of the processes that Eckerd goes through in order to acquire mineral interest and mineral rights in the state of Oklahoma. Now the question I get quite often is, uh, why is Eckerd chosen, why has Eckerd chosen the Anadarko Basin and specifically the state of Oklahoma in which to buy its minerals? Now there's a vast number of reasons why we've chosen Oklahoma, but one key reason is that we like the fact that the state of Oklahoma is one of very few states that uses a internal state rule of what's called forced pooling in which they use that to help operators decide on permits, units, and approved areas in which wells can be drilled. Let me show you some details of what forced pooling is all about and how that plays to our advantage as a mineral owner. So what I want to do is I want to use a very simple whiteboard to show you a little bit that you think you can help you to understand a little bit about forced pooling. Here's how it works. If I assume each one of these green blocks is one square mile or a section of land, that represents how the state of Oklahoma has been coordinated based on their oil and gas permitting and of course their land office. The whole state is cut up into square blocks. So we have 640 acres for each one of these sections of land. Okay. Now, when an oil company says, we would like to go drill a horizontal well, they're going to designate and they're going to say, we would like to include section A and section B, and what we want to do is drill a single horizontal well. This is the heel, or where they come down with the vertical and they drill out sideways, and this is what they call the toe. Sometimes you'll hear me reference the heel and the toe. So there's six sections of land. I'm using each one of these as an example. 640 acres, 640 acres. The oil company can drill in a single section, what we call a single section lateral, roughly 4,000 feet, or they can drill across two sections, which essentially is two sections of land and roughly nine to 10,000 feet. We refer to this as a single unit lateral. We refer to this as a dual section lateral or dual unit. Now, when an oil company makes its decision to file its permit, it will notify the state and all known mineral owners within a particular section or a proposed permitted section that they intend on drilling a well. Now here's where the fun part is. This is why we choose to be in the state of Oklahoma. You might find that when a well is drilled vertically at the top of this section over here and horizontally it drills down at the end of this other section, we now have a total of 1,000 280 acres worth of mineral ownership, okay? This pen doesn't work very well, so I'm gonna use my purple, okay? So we have 1,280 acres of minerals. Eckerd Land and Acquisition, we look for mineral acres that we believe already have production, established results, that's de-risked, and we also know there's gonna be future drilling. So we're anticipating that if we can buy minerals somewhere within this dual section, we would own the revenue rights proportionate to the minerals that we own from this producing well. So let me show you how it works. Our land department goes out and contacts everybody who might possibly own part of that 1,280 acres that's gonna make up the producing unit for this long horizontal well. Let's say we find 20 acres right here in the middle of section number two. Now when we take a look at the 20 acres, what we know is it doesn't matter if I'm down in this corner in the southwest, this corner in the northwest, etc. As long as I'm in this particular section, these two sections right here, I'm mathematically going to get my pro rata share of all the oil and gas produced. Now here's the fun part. I don't care if all the oil and gas really was being extracted from the first thousand feet of the well being drilled or whether it's way down here in the toe. Everybody in the unit, in the forced pooled unit, gets a proportionate share. Here's how the math works. 20 acres divided by 1,280 acres represents the percentage of the total minerals that we own. We then multiply that times our royalty percentage and it tells you our royalty percentage in this unit. When you invest with Eckerd, we have a portfolio. 
and we put in 5, 10, 15 sections of land, and we say this particular mineral block is our ELA XYZ mineral portfolio, and it's track number 24. In our pie, track 24 represents 20 acres in this section producing. So let's back up to make sure you appreciate what I'm saying. Forest pooling means to you and I, if we buy minerals in a designated unit with a designated well, we automatically get our proportionate share percentage of all the oil and gas that's produced. We don't have to be asked to get in, they can't carve us out, they can't dilute us. Oklahoma has decided to treat everybody fair, whether you're small or large. Many of the states, other than about three or four that I know of, do not have forest pooling. So you could literally have somebody own 20 acres in the middle and the oil company decides to add a little notch up here and exclude you in some other states, but they cannot exclude you in the state of Oklahoma because it's based on the sections of land in which they're in. That gives us incredible assurance that if we're in a producing unit, by law and regulation, we automatically get our percentage and our pro rata share of all oil and gas drill. Now, the other thing I want to point out is that this applies to all minerals at all depths and regardless of the number of wells drilled. So I now have track number 24 in a ELA portfolio. These other tracks may be in other areas of the county of the state, but this track has 20 acres. It represents track number 24, and we know that all the revenue from here is based on 20 acres of a 1,280-acre unit, and it tells us what our percentage is. Now, when the oil company comes in and they move the rig over 50 feet, they drill another vertical well, they kick it off with a little curve, they come down horizontally, they drill another well, they kick it off curve, they drill another little vertical well, they kick it off, it almost looks like a, a, a kitchen fork, right? Now they've got four offsets in one well. It doesn't matter if it's a short leg, a dual lateral, it doesn't matter if well number four is a good well, a bad well, it doesn't matter whether all the production comes from well number two or it's proportionally shared across the five wells. You and I care about one thing. Here is all the reserves in place and we have a straw in all those reserves equal to 20 acres divided by 1,280 acres total. As long as we own in that section because of forced pooling, we will always get our share of every drop of oil and gas. Now, when Eckerd looks at the way we approach minerals, it's very critical for you as our partner and co-owner to understand. The forest pooling provision gives us as a buyer, you as a buyer, owner, and partner, it gives us the same right with 20 acres as the person who might own the other 1,260 acres. Revenue, lease bonuses, shared, intrinsic value, pro rata share, all reserves. This is one of the key advantages in being in the Anadarko Basin in the state of Oklahoma. I'm Troy Eckert with Eckert Land and Acquisition. I hope forced pooling becomes a little easier for you to understand.